Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On and I'm here with another episode of what we've brilliantly named The Big Conversation, oh, yeah. where I get our excellent talent Craig Mitch and Emma Story today to have a big conversation about something that is important in terms of Spurs. So let's get straight on with it. Today, the topic is how far can Spurs go under Pochettino both this season and in the future? And I'm going to come to Craig Mitch first. What do you think of the Poch revolution, <coughs> Craig? I think it's amazing. Uh, he's rejuvenated our whole team. Uh, there's a philosophy at Spurs, which I don't think, even under Harry Renner, I don't think there was a clear-cut philosophy. He had us playing good football. He was a good motivational speaker. He could get the best out of the players, but there wasn't a clear-cut philosophy. Under Pochettino, high-pressing, energetic, young. Uh, we've broken that curse of not being able to play midweek and then be able to play on the weekend. That We played three games in six days this, this week. I mean... He, it's, it's magnificent what he's done. And in terms of how far we can go this season, I'm not going to get to, you know, overall, but this season, I think the highest possibly would be third. Interesting. So he's gone straight in with a prediction there, therefore ruining my last question. But well done, Craig. That's absolutely <laughs> fine. We don't mind that. Uh, Emma, I think in terms, I think Craig bringing up the philosophy is a great point. Um, I, you'll remember, as I do, uh, when... Levy first came in and started bringing in uh, people like Frank Arneson and then Damien Camoli as technical directors and, and trying to have that kind of uh, buying young English players with hunger who they can sell on later on. It seems more like uh, Pochettino is, is up for that as a manager as well, whereas before we'd have managers who didn't want a technical director there. Uh, is, is that philosophy thing now suddenly everyone's in tune and it really works well for the club? I think it is a, th a case of being in tune because all of a sudden you've got a manager who's not working against the chairman anymore or a chairman that's not working against the manager, depending which way you look at it. And I think we've definitely suffered with that in recent seasons. I think, you know, it was well documented that Redknapp and Levy didn't always see eye to eye, which maybe cost us over a few things. Um, you know, we've had troubles when you look at likes of Ramos and AVB again it's been difficulties working within the structure and you know dealing with Daniel Levy I think on a on a day-to-day -day or transfer window to transfer window basis um Poch clearly doesn't have those issues but that's not to say I you know you hear a lot about uh Poch is a pushover or Poch is just a Levy puppet man I think the way Poch has shaped his squad over last summer shows he's anything but he's got a very clear idea about the kind of player that he wants in his team mm. the kind of uh, attitude that he wants in mm. his team and he's not afraid to just go do you know what if you're not on my side get out I mean you look at the players that he got rid of in the summer mm -hmm. uh, you know the likes of Kabul the likes of Alibrayor this was not a kind of like oh I'm going to try and keep you around keep you happy do this it was literally like no do you know what you're done you don't fit with my team you can go and yeah. I really think in some ways that's an attitude that we have been missing for a long time yeah. and I think it's a big difference between what we've had with previous managers and what we're having right now with with Poch I mean I think everything about this regime is going in the right direction yeah, it's do, exciting. You know, do you know what? I think that's a really good point and also I think we've actually had managers who've tried to do that before but haven't had um, the respect of the players to be able to pull it off so I know AVB actually tried to do a similar thing with Adebayor and Adebayor I think was probably more powerful in the dressing room than AVB was so it shows how powerful Poch is yeah. on, a, on, a, on a similar um, topic uh, you know this kind of uh, the, the youth project if we can call it the youth project should we start worrying already about the fact that we've got players now that, that the country are talking about, talking specifically Deli Ali and Eric Dyer? Uh, you know, are there going to be vultures swooping for them in the next few years? And if so, will we be able to, to ride that out and not sell them? Or, or will we have to sell them as we did have to with Modric and Bale and Berbatov in the past? And will that affect how far Poch can take this team, this squad? I mean, it's become a sticky situation, football now, because even a good example would be West Brom. I mean, two, three years ago, if we dropped in there with 20, 21 million for a player, West Brom would never have turned their noses up at it. But the amount of money in football right now means that teams that aren't necessarily as big as the big, big teams can hang on to players. Yeah. They can pay wages, they can offer them things. And um, I mean, I feel like we can play these, pay sorry, these players decent sums of money. Obviously, the prospect of success is always lingering over a player's head. Do I want to go to a bigger club? Will I win things? But there's a lot of potential in this Spurs squad. I feel like oh, the overall happiness of a player plays a huge role. And it just looks like all of these players are happy at our squad. Obviously, we need success. It's going to linger there. The likes of Harry Kane, Ericsson and maybe Lloris are the, the three that are always looking like they're on the edge of maybe going if we don't get top, top four, if we don't That's win anything. Exactly, and obviously Deli Ali's been playing amazing and it's still very early, but I think play teams can hang on to players much better than they used to. Yeah. Is it possible, Emma, do you think now that we've got the stadium <coughs> within three or four years' time, that those players may think, well, actually, is it worth my while going anywhere 
bigger now when actually I could be a club legend by the time this huge stadium comes in, all the money starts coming in and actually Spurs might be a, a genuine prospect to be one of those clubs in that period of time. I don't think it's actually even necessarily got anything to do with the stadium. I just think it's the idea of being part of something that you know is growing and is heading in the right direction. You know, these kids, and I call them kids because compared to me they kind of are, um, but you know, the likes of Ali and Kane and Dyer. Mason, they're all coming through at a really young age and they're growing together. Like Kane spoke a lot last season about how brilliant it was being on a team with Ryan Mason when they come through the youth together, they come through the academy together and now they were playing on the big stage for each other. And I think that kind of mentality and that sort of spirit in our squad is now really, really strong. Um, I agree with what um, Craig said about the fact that the days of little clubs just rolling over and handing over players because a big club comes in are kind of gone because there is so much money now in the game. Obviously, we need to cut our cloth a little bit accordingly because we're going to have a stadium to pay for. We saw what that did to Arsenal when they were paying off sure. theirs. Um, but we didn't pay very much for most of these players. So we've kind of almost got like that little cushion in the bank. So to me, there's no reason why we would need to sell them. And for me, there's no reason why they need to go. I think, you know, in terms of playing regularly, playing good football, heading in the right direction, why would you not want to stay at Spurs at the moment as yeah. a young player? Totally agree. And I think there are plenty of examples around of, of players who make that big move in their mind and suddenly don't get a game and, and then their, their, uh, you know, their level drops within the game, their reputation drops yeah. within the game. So I think that's absolutely Quickly, right. One more thing on that point as well. I just feel like a lot of our players don't have huge egos as well. They keep talking about, as Poch likes to put it, keeping their feet on the grass instead of the ground. And um, they, they're all, they keep, Deli Ali in post-match press conferences, always talking about how he's humble and he's just happy to be playing football. Harry Kane, all of them, they're very humble players. So as long as they keep level-headed and don't, you know, let it get too big for their boots, I don't see why they would want to leave. Yeah, and also one thing that, and this doesn't get talked about enough, I think, one thing that Spurs are really good at is giving people new contracts when they deserve it, when they burn it. I think Harry Kane yeah. signed three new contracts last year, yeah, is that right? that's right. You know, and there aren't many clubs that you see about who actually do that. So if you like Harry Kane, and he does say openly, doesn't he say, I'd like to be a club legend, then, you know, maybe potentially he could be the person leading us into that new stadium, and by that point being England's number nine or number ten. It is a long way away, though. Yeah, it's three or four years away, but, you know, if we get third or fourth this year, <laughs> oh. then who knows? Uh, they remind me, I was going to say, they remind me at the moment a little bit of that, um, you may not remember this so well, but of the Leeds team of the early noughties yeah. under David O'Leary. They had, you know, Ian Hart, Harry Kuehl, Alan Smith, um, really great young players. And then there was a bit of leadership in there as well. So they had like a David Batty and um, they had a few other older players like Gary Kelly. And, and so that leads me to my next question, really. Do we have, do you think, the leadership required within the squad to take us to that extra level? When, when times get tough, when a few injuries come in, or when you're losing a game in the last few minutes, you know, we have come back from, from losing positions, we're yeah. doing all right, but do you think we need a bit more leadership? Is it worth bringing in someone with a bit more experience, a bit like Harry did with Scott Parker? Or do you think Super Yan and Hugo are, are enough to take us through? Um, I think you've hit the nail on the head with my concerns. I feel like we're, we're winning games and we're fighting back into games where we've gone behind, most notably Swansea, purely because of the passion we have and the energy we have. How long that can carry you over a long season. Last season, we played more games than any other premiership team in all competitions. How long we can keep that up again this season remains to be seen, but you do need characters. And I've, I've never really agreed with leading from the back. Having a goalkeeper as a captain, in my opinion, I know Hugo's captain for France. I know he captains us and he's doing a decent job, but I really feel like your best captain is either in the middle of the park or at centre half, someone that can really control, give directions from out there. If a scrap happens, can really get involved in it. From the back, it's always hard to lead. So I do feel like we really need some leaders out there in the field. They're all really young. I mean, who is the oldest person in that squad? It's probably Lloris. Well, yeah, it's it's Hugo and, and Jan Vertonghen, definitely. I would say, uh, just before I bring Emma in, I would say Eric Dyer, to me, has the looks of a Tottenham captain Capability, for years yeah. to come. But yeah, like you said, it, maybe you know he's 21, 22 oh, wow. now. Emma, what, what do you think? Well, I, I can understand the concern yeah. um, because they are all really young, but I'm, I, I never thought I'd say this. Last season, I would have completely disagreed with myself on this point, but I actually think we've got it there. I think the characters are there, and I think the players that have come in, the likes of Deli Alley, like, we've talked on and on about his maturity. Mm. Like, we haven't had that in young players, that combination of, you know, obviously being really young, energetic, talented, but also having a strong head on, on their shoulders. You know, we talked a little bit about how uh, Deli Alley, you know, you can draw comparisons with Jermaine Genus, and we said, you know, Jermaine Genus had all the skills, but he didn't necessarily have the mentality. Right. I don't feel that concern with Deli Ali. Eric Dyer, you absolutely hit the nail on the head for me. He is the one who I think is a future 
Tottenham captain, yeah. absolutely. But he doesn't need to be captain to lead from the front, so to speak. And oh. I think we've seen this season so far that that's definitely not the case. Jan, alongside Toby now, is so settled. You can see it every single game that he comes out. You know, he is no longer worried about himself and focusing on his own performance, playing inside his head. He is out there demonstrating and leading, which is what you need, like you said, in the outfield. And then if you go up front, you look at Harry Kane. If there's ever a player that leads by example yeah. mm -hmm. and never lets it go, it is him. And I feel like... A bit like we talk about the sort of you know development of these players all coming together they can get strong in in the leadership side of things together as well like i think it is all about we haven't had a strong spine in our team sure. for quite a long time and now with the way that we're we're set up i really feel like we do and there's nothing to say that that strong spine can't you know be leaders together yeah. why why not why yeah. does it always have to be we have to look as elsewhere know. sure why almost, can't we bring it through yeah almost egging each other on to to do right and and there were those rumors last year weren't there that it was harry kane who was almost single-handedly responsible for telling that kind of group of that clique of french players or or, or french speaking players out of bayor and kabul etc where it all went wrong during a training session and, and and if that's the case which i heard it was the case then it just shows they're all out of the club now. So that just shows. So uh, I said earlier, you know, you've, you'd ruined my last question by giving a prediction. So you said, you know, you think potentially we could get third this season. But in terms of the long term, could we over the next few <coughs> years become a title challenging club? Or, you know, is it enough for us to look at trying to get still stay within that top five and, and, and challenge for that top four every season? What can we do? do I mean, I, I would love to say, you know, based on the performances we've seen in recent weeks and, and the spirit of the club that we could then go on in the future to, to challenge for the title. But the, the realism is we need key, we're going to have to bring in key world-class signings. That's what all of the big teams do. You need someone that's just upper echelon. You need those world-class players in your team. Do we have world-class players in our team? On potential, Hugo on his day may be world-class. Ericsson has the potential, still very young. But I don't think we have an out-and-out world-class player. Man City's got two or three. I hate to admit, Arsenal's got a couple. We really need world-class players in the future that will take you to the title and, and, and we don't have that yet. So if we can get world-class players and if we get, could get Champions League, yeah. attract more players and then make that a consistent thing, then possibly. It's too early though for me. OK, and Emma, what about your predictions for, uh, for this season? How high could we go this season? And then just a general point about the future, yeah. I mean, yeah, I do think, you know, if everything went our way, we could finish third. I don't think it will happen. I think we will probably tire a little bit towards the end of the season. Yeah. Um, I think it's even, even at this ridiculous stage, I think it is foolish to write Chelsea off. I know they're in an absolute disaster of a situation at the moment. They can't win the title, absolutely not. But top four? I, I don't think they can get top four. I, I know this is a whole different debate. It is a whole different debate. But all there's I was too many teams, they, they need to run strong points. It's a different points. channel almost. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, no, but what I was going to say is, like, I mean, top four is a possibility. I think more realistically, a trophy and top five is where I would see our season finishing this year. In the future, I think it's a little bit like Craig said, it's kind of too early to tell. I think you have to be very careful with bringing players in. Um, we do need them, but you know we talked about the lack of ego in our team sure, and the fact they're all playing for each yeah. other. You've got to be careful if you bring in like a 45, 50 million pound marquee signing, they're going to fit in with the ethos of the team and that they're not suddenly going to become the big I am and it is all about them. Because all that will happen then is, yeah, they might get you over the line on a certain amount of games, but the rest of the team will, will almost shrink away yeah. and then all of a sudden you're in a position this where yeah the, the, the team collective is no longer working so it's going to be a really interesting few seasons and I think what I'm excited about is there is a lot of potential so I wouldn't necessarily call us title challenges in the next few seasons yet I think there's an awful lot of water to go under the bridge from then but I do think I can just see us getting better from the position that we are now which I think is you know to be honest I'm really happy with yeah. it's nice to be on yeah. an upward upward trajectory. Absolutely. Good points from both guys. Let us know what you thought of our big conversation. If there are points you agree with or disagree with, let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on uh, Twitter at Spurred on TV. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, we are back. Spurverts part two. I am still joined by Emma's story. We still have a narrative and we're